Before I delve into another routing protocol, which is going to be BGP, Border Gateway Protocol, the one that runs the internet and the one that runs our data centers these days, um, our cloud computing and stuff, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover or deal with some uh, tools that BGP might use to create certain policies. And for one of them, the first one I'm going to tackle is the access control lists. In iOS, we have two types of IP access control lists. Standard, this one will be a matching mechanism that only looks into IP packet and checks the source of IP, nothing else. Just the source IP address is checked in by standard ACL. The extended ACL is much more robust and versatile because it checks the source and destination IP. And we can also check the port numbers at the layer four, source and destination ports in TCP or UDP, what have you. So obviously I'm gonna start off with the standard ACL here just to see some applications and there's numerous applications. It's, it's impossible to survive in Cisco IOS uh, not to use access control, control list a few times in, in your designs. So what I'm gonna start off with is, is a standard ACL which is a, a ma matching mechanism on IP source address. IOS offers two ways of implementing access control list. Um, and one is the, to use numbered ACLs and the other is to use named ACLs. Named ACLs are much easier to use when it comes to modifying some stuff, but we can use actually that concept and, and do the same thing with a standard uh, ACL, which is the numbered or extended that is numbered. But we'll get that soon enough. And um, let's just create a situation for us so we can actually practice the access controllers. So here in this design, I'm going to use ACL standard in one application. So uh, there are numerous applications of access controllers. They're used to create interesting traffic for NATs, interesting traffic for VPN tunnels and stuff like that. Here, I'm going to use this for just a simple packet filtering, which is actually commonly used on Cisco routers. So here in this example, I have this EIGRP cloud, which is redistributed into OSPF. And I want to block, let's say 10.1.103 from entering that portion of a network. So I'm going to act because I'm using the standard ACL and I'm only checking the source IP address. The placement of that must be closer to the destination. It's a counterintuitive, but think about it. If I'm matching on the source, if I were to block this on R4, for example, coming in here, in that situation, the source will be blocked going anywhere because I am only looking at the source IP address. I am not looking at the destination. So standard ACLs used as a packet filtering must be placed closer to the destination rather than to the source. Because if the packet comes from here and goes there, it should be allowed. But if it comes from here and goes there to R6 and tries to go out to EIGRP cloud, that should be forbidden. So we're going to deny this traffic on R6. So the placement of standard ACL is closer to the destination of your IP packets. Let's jump to R6 then and try to create an access control list. Okay, so um, the standard ACL can be done with access list, which is the number, or IP access list, which is the maybe second video will be about the named ACLs. For now, I'll use numbered. So what follows is a numbering scheme. Between uh, 1 and 99, nine, we are using standard ACL, which will only look into the source IP address for matching uh, of the packet. If we use between 100 and 199, we will use extended ACL, and we will use at the so we can use a source and destination as our matching mechanism, and we can also look into the ports, source and destination ports for TCP and UDP and other protocols. So for now, I'm going to go for one, which is the standard ACL, and what it expects to see is there are three options. So I can use remark. Um, and this is just a description. It doesn't do anything. It's just informing when I do display, show around conf running config, it, it displays information as to what this access control is supposed to do. I could say uh, block, uh, maybe block, uh, um, I don't know, PC3. That's it. So there's just a description. There's no statements as, as of this moment. Now, the statement first will be now deny. I want to deny certain traffic. And in my case, if I do a question mark, I can deny host name 
or ABCD, so IP address source. I can use keyword any and host. Host and any are actually aliases. So if I want to de deny a particular IP address from entering, let's say, this router incoming, so I'm going to say the, the 10, 1, 2, 1, or 3 is my address. So now I can send 10, 1, 2, 1, or 3. Now what follows is a tricky part. So I'm going to say question mark. What I need to specify is a wildcard mask. Wildcard bits are basically the opposite of a net mask. So what is, what is the net mask for a host? Well, it's 255.255.255.255. It's slash 32. The opposite of that will be basically 0, 0, 0, 0. Let's see that actually here. I already prepared that. So this is my host. And uh, the mask of a host is slash 32. So it's all once. So each bit is masking a bit of the address in NetMask. The wildcard mask is the opposite. So if this is a 1, the opposite is 0. So if this is a 1, the opposite is 0. In fact, when you create the wildcard mask, it's the easiest way, trick that you can use is to take 255 and decrement the value of a particular byte in the network mask. In other words, if this is 255, 255 here, and I have 255 minus 255, it's going to be zero. So this is going to be all zero here, right? If I have, again, 255 minus oh, 255 is zero. So now the byte is zero, and so on and so forth. So this is the way the wildcard mask work. 255 min minus the value of the mask is the wildcard bits. Okay, so if I say here now, let's actually maybe clear the terminal and uh, access list one uh, deny and I'll say 10.1.2.103. So the wildcard mask should be all zeros for that host. Now, if I do show run include access list, as of this moment, I have a description. And the first statement in access control is number one, which denies this. So what is actually happening here? Where's my wildcard mask? Well, in access list standard, we can use the keyword host and it's going to be actually removed. But I, I, I would suggest that we get into the habit to do that because in extended access controllers, you need to use a keyword host or the full wildcard mask here for hosts, like this, all zeros. So if I do remove that access control list, let's say remove it, and I will recreate that. So access list one, deny. I can use now the keyword host and just put this IP address. In IP access list standard, I, even, I can even skip the keyword host because it's going to be skipped anyways. So do show run include access list. Access control lists check packets for here a standard for source IP address and it is using a top-down processing. So that means that if, let's say, the first parameter, it would check the packet and it is not 10.1.2.103, what's going to happen with the packet later? Well, it's going to be denied because each access control list has an implicit kind of, you know, unwritten, but it's there, deny everything else. So if I start my access control list with a deny statement, I need to have at least one permit, otherwise everything will be denied. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to permit everything else. So I'll, again, I'm using the same access control list number, and the second statement will be permit, and now I can use either any address with wildcard mask opposite, right? So any address would be this, or I can use keyword any. In fact, if I hit that, it'll accept it, do show, and it will probably convert that to me, for me, um, access list. And it converted that to any anyways. But what does this do at this point? Well, it doesn't do much. It doesn't do actually anything. It's just sitting there and waiting for, for this to be applied. Right, so where do I apply it? If I want to apply this as a packet filtering mechanism, 
I need to apply this on the interface with IP access hyphen group commands. Let's go to our picture. So we want to block this particular guy and permit everybody else from entering that cloud. So the packets can come in from two different directions and from two different interfaces. So they can come in from here to enter that cloud, which is the E0 slash 0.26 or they can come from here and come in on R6 on E0 slash 3.4. So I need to apply this access control list to block this guy on both interfaces because I don't have a, 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 an idea which one it is. Actually, I can do the trace route, but if let's say this is the path and this goes down, this is going to be the path and, and, and in the opposite is as well true. So let's go ahead and apply this on both interfaces, E0026 and E034. So I'm going to go back to my interface 00 slash 26 and I'm going to say to apply that as a packet filtering, IP access group one, and now I need to specify the direction. So the packets in or out. In my case, when blocking the packets coming into the router, into this interface, into this interface. So I need to use the keyword in for inbound. And I need to go to interface 03. Dots, what was that? Four, was it? E304, yeah, and I will apply this also. So at this point, what I can do is to do the traces. So PC2 should not be a, okay, actually, let's go do show IP interface E00 uh, 26 first. We can check that. It's a huge output, by the way, so I can maybe cut this output and do uh, include access list like this and it shows me that the outgoing access list is not set but inbound is set and here's another rule about access control list access control list can be applied on the interface only in this situation that it is either inbound or outbound you cannot apply the access to access control lists for inbound only one access control list in one direction is allowed. So if I can have two access control lists on a single interface, but only if one is inbound and the other is outbound. I cannot have two access control lists on a single interface for inbound or two access control lists for outbound. There can be only one situation with two access control lists. One is inbound, the other, other is outbound. Here is good, it's just an inbound. And the same, obviously, is 3.4. So now we are actually blocking this 103, hopefully, from entering that cloud. Let's just verify that real quick. So I'm going to go to PC2. I should be able to ping. And one of those networks is 10.30.0.1. Uh, and the trace route, 30.0.1. So it goes to... Uh, 2, 3, 13, 1, 55, 4, 6. So it goes like this here. Then 13, 1, which is this one. Then it goes to 15, 5, which is this one. Then it goes to 10, 1, 4, 6, which is this one. So it goes like here, there, 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 and enters that interface. So it's okay. So PC3 probably has the same path. Now, is it going to work? Ping 130.0.1. No, you, 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 you. So here, unreachable. And um, if I go back to here and I'll see do show access list, um, enter, we see eight matches were hidden from that PC and they are now forbidden. So if I go trace route from PC3, I'm getting, I'm getting up to this interface where the access control is applied, and I'm getting this exclamation A. A is administrative uh, uh, policy, which in this context is access control is that is blocking the traffic. So we're now protected and we're allowed from any other address but this. 
One last thing I want to add, sometimes we want to see who was trying to do that. So let's just uh, maybe tackle that real quick. I'll show how to modify access control list uh, in the next um, uh, video, how to properly do that. But for now, I'll do this very quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'll leave the IP access group on the interfaces only do show run include access list. I'm going to copy that. So the quickest way to modify that access control list for now, but if there's a better way to do that. I'm going to just copy that real quickly here. I'm going to do the configuration like this. I'll say no access list one first. I need to remove it. And then I will add the log statement at the end here. So this will log all attempts of accessing from 103 all on those interfaces. So what I'm going to do first, I have to remove the access control list and then recreate it with the log statement uh, on the first line. So I'm going to go back here to R6 real quick and I'm going to just paste it in. So it's going to be a split of a second. It's done. So do show run include access list. What I want to show you is that when I do the, tra let's say, tracer or ping, whichever, let's say, let's do ping. Obviously, it's you, 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 but look what happens on R6 now. The packet is being logged and only the first packet from the source is being logged. So what happens is I see that somebody from 10.1.2.103 was trying to access that particular destination and we match five packets here. So only one log shows for all those packets uh, pretty much here. And that concludes this video. In the next one, I'm going to tackle the named access control list and see how that works for us.